Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the insightful guide, Dear Founder, by Maynard Webb and Carly Adler. This potent book serves as a roadmap for those venturing into entrepreneurship, offering indispensable advice from industry experts to conquer common hurdles in establishing a thriving startup. Maynard Webb, an accomplished investor and former COO of eBay, brings his rich experience in nurturing promising startups to the table. Alongside him, award-winning journalist Carly Adler, co-author of the New York Times bestsellers Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics and Startup Land, lends her storytelling prowess to this guide, making it a riveting read for aspiring entrepreneurs. Dear Founder provides a comprehensive introduction to the world of business, beautifully marrying Webb's experience in the startup ecosystem and Adler's dexterity with words. This book is an excellent resource for entrepreneurs at any stage of their journey, leaders looking for growth strategies, and mentors and coaches seeking to equip their mentees with practical knowledge and wisdom. Tune in as we uncover the nuggets of wisdom nestled within this noteworthy guide. Dear Founder, Letters of Advice for Anyone Who Leads, Manages, or Wants to Start a Business Introduction Unlock the Secrets to Startup Success In the ever-shrinking and interconnected world we live in, setting up a business has never been more accessible. Boundaries are being broken down, with the internet at our fingertips, and the stage is perfectly set for the thriving world of startups. But despite all these opportunities, why do numerous young ventures still stumble out of the starting gate? Here's the crux of the matter. Even if you're armed with the most revolutionary idea ever conceived, your startup is destined to fall flat if basic business principles aren't heeded. In reality, it's the simplest and, ironically, the most widespread blunders that spell doom for countless startups. It's perhaps prudent, then, to humble yourself and seek the wisdom of battle-hardened veterans when making your debut in the entrepreneurial battlefield. That's precisely what you'll encounter in this captivating narrative. Seasoned business stalwarts who've navigated the turbulent waters of startup land and lived to tell the tale. But don't mistake this for a mere survival guide. Start implementing the insights offered, and you'll find yourself not just surviving, but flourishing in one of the most exhilarating industries out there. In this captivating narrative, you'll uncover the benefits of aligning with investors who offer more than just financial backing, methods to overcome the propensity for micromanagement and why the process of team building can be likened to handing out tickets to the Super Bowl. Part 1. Before you plunge into the startup world, make sure you're truly invested. If you're here, it's safe to say you're probably contemplating the exhilarating journey of launching your own business. But have you paused to ask yourself why? Is it the contemporary allure of the startup world or the lure of rapid fortune? If you haven't given this careful thought, now is the time to delve into some essential questions and hard-hitting realities. Firstly, it's worth acknowledging the harsh truth. A significant number of startups don't make it past the starting line. It's a statistical reality, and frankly, it just makes sense. After all, resources, whether it's capital, audience attention or backing, are finite. A small fraction of startups witness skyrocketing success, think Google or Facebook, while the rest scramble for what's left. This isn't meant to scare you off, but to instill a sense of reality. If you're determined to succeed, you need to be ready to roll up your sleeves, make astute decisions, and put in the hard yards. Still on board? Brilliant. Now it's time to crystallize your ambitions, be it amassing a fortune or shaping the world. A clear understanding of your goal will serve as your beacon during the inevitable tough times. Moreover, ensure you're deeply committed to your endeavor before you plunge in. Remember, you're bound to encounter obstacles. Persistence is the name of the game, even when the odds seem overwhelmingly stacked against you. However, it's also smart to place some tangible limits on your commitment. 
acting as your safety net. For instance, you could commit $200,000 of your own money and give yourself a year. If you see slim to no prospects of success after a year, it's probably wise to tap out before good money is lost, chasing bad. One final point to remember, although your journey may be a personal one, having a supportive network can be a game changer. It's critical to ensure that your loved ones understand and are supportive of your venture and are well aware of the inherent risks. Your life will become a whirlwind, erratic, packed with long hours and high pressure situations, and you don't want this causing tension in your personal relationships. Part two, raising funds successfully. It's all about networking, solid planning, and the art of listening. Raising funds can often feel like an uphill battle, a task as futile as the misadventures of Don Quixote, the famed Spanish knight of Cervantes' novel, charging at windmills mistaking them for giants. But if your fundraising efforts seem to be stalling, it could be because you've overlooked some fundamental rules of the game. First and foremost, successful fundraising hinges on establishing the right contacts. It requires careful curation of a list of potential investors who aren't just monetary resources, but are well-versed in your industry. If your startup is in the pharmaceutical sector, for instance, reaching out to investors specializing in the music industry won't do much good. Remember, you're not just seeking capital. You're looking for strategic partners who can offer guidance, leverage their experience, and provide access to their network. The best investors can unlock opportunities for your business. So, instead of approaching anyone with the means to invest, concentrate on cultivating relationships with a handful of industry experts. This targeted approach is likely to yield quicker results. Knowing who to approach is half the battle won. The other half involves persuading them to invest in your vision. This is where meticulous planning and exceptional listening skills come into play. Let's consider planning. Effective fundraising demands a thorough plan that clearly outlines your current position and how the funds you're soliciting will help you reach your objectives. This should be thought through well in advance, so you're not desperately seeking funds at the 11th hour. And remember, your ask should align with your startup's growth stage. If you're still in the early stages, it's wise to keep your monetary request realistic. Lastly, successful fundraising also involves truly listening to your potential investors, even if they reject your proposal. If multiple investors express the same concerns about your business plan, for example, it's time to hit the pause button on fundraising. Instead, devote that time to refining your business strategy. It's better to have a solid plan that investors can get behind then rush into raising funds. Part three, micromanaging isn't just a stress catalyst. It's ultimately detrimental. Every entrepreneur is inherently protective of their business. After all, it is their brainchild. However, the temptation to keep an iron grip on every detail, akin to an overzealous parent, can often lead down a counterproductive path. Overseeing every facet of your business not only creates unnecessary stress for you, but may also put your cherished enterprise at risk. Fear not, though. A host of easy-to-implement tools can enhance your employees' efficiency, negating the need for you to be constantly monitoring them. The secret lies in fostering a company culture that inspires excellence. This involves clearly articulating your goals and spurring your team towards achieving them by celebrating accomplishments. Don't skimp on the applause. If your team accomplishes 80% of what they set out to do, consider it a victory. A vibrant company culture also proactively tackles issues. Here, leading by example is crucial. Empower your team to bring their problems to you and reciprocate by actively addressing these issues. Ideally, you'd evaluate the problem's relevance on the day it's reported and initiate steps to resolve it within 24 hours. Implementing these policies will foster increased self-reliance amongst your employees, freeing up your time to focus on other vital tasks. Here's the silver lining. When your team exhibits autonomy and initiative, your business stands a stronger chance to flourish. This lesson was learned firsthand by author Maynard Webb through his experience with clients like Yahoo and eBay. 
A striking instance from Webb's tenure at eBay illustrates this brilliantly. His team was grappling with an immense logistical challenge. The influx of users' sale advertisements was overwhelming the company's system, causing a 24-hour lag before new posts were indexed and displayed online. Understandably, this bottleneck frustrated customers who were paying premium rates for higher visibility. Typically, rectifying such a critical technical issue would have required up to 18 months. However, having been immersed in the culture of self-reliance that Webb had nurtured at eBay, his team took matters into their own hands. Without escalating the problem up the chain, they engineered a brand new indexing process within six months, successfully squashing the bug. Part four, mastering the art of delegation. The racy model to the rescue. Maynard Webb is no stranger to the complexities of delegating tasks. Consider the tale of one of his managers. Despite exceptional operational results and glowing sales figures, the manager was criticized for his micromanaging tendencies by his team. The manager was left drained, while the team was frustrated with their lack of independence. Ultimately, the manager chose to abandon micromanagement. However, when Webb later inquired about the progress of his project, the manager was clueless. He had delegated the task to his team and had completely disengaged from the process. Obviously, this is far from an ideal example of delegation. So, what does commendable delegation look like? The key lies in striking the right balance between managerial supervision and responsibility. It involves ensuring that your project is being carried out correctly without constantly infringing on your employee's space. For this, you need to identify team members who are both competent and willing to execute crucial tasks and convey your objectives clearly. The subsequent step entails routinely assessing the progress and acknowledging stellar performance. Sounds challenging? Not quite. There's a handy tool you can employ right away to facilitate effective delegation. Meet the RASI model. Here's how it works. When delegating tasks, pose four critical questions to yourself. First, who is responsible? This involves appointing someone preferably as low down the hierarchy as feasible, to take charge, unless you want to fall back into the micromanagement trap? Next, who approves? This person has the authority to overrule the decisions made by the responsible individual. Typically, this is you, the delegator. Third, who is consulted? This refers to those who may not have the final say in the project, but whose insights are crucial to its success. Lastly, Who is informed? These are the stakeholders, people impacted by and interested in the decisions made. Remember, when in doubt, it's always preferable to inform more people than fewer. Part five, hire carefully, fire swiftly, the hiring principle of successful startups. During Webb's first job interview with IBM, the interviewer asked him about his thoughts on firing someone. Webb replied that he could do it, though he couldn't envision it ever being necessary. The interviewer simply laughed in response. Soon enough, Webb would comprehend the reason behind the laugh. The harsh reality is that not everyone is suitable for their job. Quiz. An average manager about the percentage of their hires they would choose again after observing their performance over a couple of years, and they'll likely claim that 80% of their decisions were spot on. The remaining 20%, however, constitute serial underperformers who would be better replaced. While established companies can afford to bear some non-performing employees due to their size, startups don't enjoy that luxury. With restricted budgets and resources, startups cannot afford to sustain those who aren't contributing adequately. This necessitates acting promptly and resolutely when there's no other alternative but to release someone. Regrettably, numerous managers dither when it comes to making such a decisive move. But here's the problem. Have you heard of the adage, one bad apple spoils the whole barrel? Underperformers tend to create a similar effect, undermining the morale of high performers who resent picking up the slack for someone else. Quick action can avert this issue. Occasionally, a well-timed, supportive intervention can even salvage the employee's performance. 
However, if this isn't feasible, you must wield the metaphorical axe and make the tough decision. The optimal strategy, though, is preventing such an uncomfortable situation from arising in the first place by being meticulous with hiring. Hiring new employees should be as selective as distributing a limited number of Super Bowl tickets. Wouldn't you put considerable thought into deciding who deserves those? Similarly, when two candidates seem equally qualified on paper, factor in their intangible qualities, such as a willingness to go the extra mile and deliver exceptional customer service. Part 6. Navigating Stressors. Harnessing the Power of the Ephemeral. As an entrepreneur, stress can seem as constant a companion as your shadow. Webb's experience says it all. One morning, he had to rise at 5 a.m. for an 8 a.m. meeting in San Francisco, a two-hour drive away. However, before setting out, he decided to quickly respond to a few emails. When he opened his laptop, calamity ensued. He couldn't access his account, despite using the right password. Refreshing the page didn't help either. And to compound things, Webb was battling a nasty flu. Undoubtedly, it was the worst possible preamble to an already demanding day. In such moments, taking a step back can make all the difference. Webb took a couple of deep breaths, pondered his situation, and rebooted his laptop. Miraculously, the problem was resolved. As a startup founder, such stressful scenarios are hardly out of the ordinary. The trick to navigating them lies in reminding oneself that the situation is transient. No matter how gloomy things seem right now, they're bound to improve especially if you make a concerted effort to resolve them. Panicking just exacerbates the situation. That's when you're most likely to stumble and lag behind. When stuck in a bind, adopt this simple four-step strategy. Decelerate, identify the immediate cause of the problem, devise a solution, and proactively implement it. Achieving this requires creating some distance between yourself and your operational tasks to scrutinize the issue at hand. Furthermore, it's prudent to anticipate problems that might interfere with crucial tasks. Draft a list of priorities and tackle them methodically. Most importantly, give yourself ample time to complete these tasks to avoid rushing through them at the last minute. Part 7. Fueling growth amid competition, turning rivalry into opportunity. A few years ago, Yahoo was busy developing a flight search tool named Hipmunk, The initiative seemed to be on the fast track to success when Google announced it was working on a rival service. This was a significant setback for Yahoo, as competition, especially from a behemoth like Google, inevitably makes fundraising an uphill battle. Such challenges don't just unsettle managers and employees, they also unnerved investors. There's often a tipping point when investors express concerns about your worries, signaling it's time for you to sit up and take notice. So, how do you react when a competitor encroaches on your territory? The first step is to reassure your investors, as losing even one backer can trigger a domino effect, leading to a mass withdrawal. Secondly, maintain your composure and adopt a wait-and-see approach while evaluating the magnitude of the threat. Don't fret if you're raising less capital during this period of uncertainty. Admittedly, It's easier said than done to remain calm when faced with a crisis. Yet consider this. As of the time this was written, Yahoo's Hipmunk is ranked higher than Google Flights on the product recommendation website, Slant. Furthermore, remember that competition isn't always a disadvantage. In fact, Google's entry into the travel industry served as a wake-up call for existing companies like Expedia and Priceline, who consolidated their forces to maintain their stronghold. They joined hands with Hipmunk, offering their financial strength and expertise, transforming the rookie into a formidable force capable of resisting the Silicon Valley Titan's takeover attempt. A feat that would have been inconceivable had Google not declared itself a competitor. Part 8. Panicking won't help in a crisis. Gather your facts first, then act swiftly. Envision a bomb threat in a subway system. Authorities have to respond swiftly but also aptly. The most vital step? 
ensuring they've assessed the situation correctly. The same principle applies to managing a business crisis. When a crisis strikes, the first crucial step is to analyze, discern whether the crisis is genuine, and if so, gauge its severity. This entails tapping into a crucial managerial skill, listening. Often, it's your employees who first sense something amiss. So keeping your ear to the ground can help preempt potential problems. Having sensed a potential crisis, you must devise a system to accurately gauge its severity. During his time at eBay, Webb utilized a scale from one to nine, akin to the Richter scale for earthquakes. Minor, low priority issues ranked at the bottom while high stakes problems threatening the company's existence topped the scale. In practical terms, an eBay user unable to access the site due to a personal computer bug would score a one, a non-critical issue with limited scope for intervention. However, if eBay's backup system failed during a power outage, that was a maximum level nine crisis. So how should you tackle such severe crises? There's only one viable approach, sound the alarm, rally the troops, and strive for a swift resolution. Why the urgency? Consider the old proverb about a frog in a pot of water. If the water is heated slowly, the frog fails to perceive the gradual change and doesn't jump out until it's too late. For a real-world illustration of swift crisis intervention, look at Tesla. In 2015, upon discovering a potential seatbelt security issue, Tesla promptly recalled the affected cars and sought a solution. By doing so, they not only averted risking customers' lives, but also avoided legal complications. So, as a founder, whether you're grappling with fundraising or delegation challenges, remember there are always ways to boost your performance and steer your company towards success. Final summary. Let's face it. Embarking on a startup journey is not for the meek. The harsh reality is that more startups flounder than flourish, and avoiding that common fate demands relentless commitment, unyielding resolve, and an appetite for long hours. Hence, mastering the fundamentals before taking the plunge is vital, be it raising funds efficiently, letting go of underperforming staff, or inspiring your team, these are skills you can acquire. Coupled with a proactive mindset and an aptitude for maintaining composure during crises, you'll be well positioned for triumph. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.